Hey guys, it's Alexis, Sophie Leather. Thanks for watching. Um, today I'm gonna teach you how to build, teach you. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to make this clutch bag like this. It's really blotchy right now because I just finished putting oil on it. So it wouldn't look like this normally. Um, yeah, it's a little blotchy, but I got stuff to do. I can't wait till it settles in. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to make this bag. Okay, it's a ladies clutch bag. Uh, I had scrap leather laying around. That's why this piece is going to be a shop ornament because I can't get that out. You can cover it with another piece of leather, but anybody got time for that right now? So yeah, so I'm going to show you how to make this. All right. In the description and in the pin first comments, there's going to be a link to the pattern so you can download the pattern and follow along. I'm going to assume that you have basic leather crafting skills. If not, you can check out this leather crafting playlist right here. The other thing is, if you guys are advanced, if you notice that this is just a clutch, so there is no gusset. You can add a gusset on this, all right? It doesn't change anything else. Uh, you can add like a one and a half inch gusset or something like that if you guys want to try that. Um, I think this flap will be long enough to come back on this buckle. If not, you might have to make that a little longer. I haven't done it yet, but I'm assuming that I can add you know, about a one and a half inch gusset, you know, I have a lot of room there. So for you advanced guys, if you do it, let me know how it goes. I will do that soon once I get more leather in, um, but you can add a little gusset if you wanted to on that. The other thing about this is, what I was gonna say, I don't even know what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, okay, so for me, this design takes about two hours, okay? So you can get, get this done two hours. If you wanna get really pristine and add different things, in other words, you can add a stitch up here if you wanted to instead of uh, this. Um, you can make this back pocket a little bit different. Uh, you can make it like an inset where it doesn't come all the way out. The reason why I made it go all the way out is because all I have to do is do one stitch run and it covers the whole bag. That's the reason why I did that. Kind of a unique uh, fastener system. I'll show you uh, in the next segment all the hardware, where to get it, Links are gonna be all up in there. Um, but yeah, uh, a little bit about this bag as well, the leather, you wanna use five ounce. Five ounce, anywhere from four to five ounce is ideal. I use 45 ounce for everything on the bag. So there's, it's just one size. So if you guys just get one side of four to five uh, ounce, you can make this bag. Um, this, is, this is weaver leather, 45 ounce. They're natural tooling leather. I normally don't use that to make stuff. I just had this laying around and I figured, well, I can make a bag, a tutorial on this bag. But I normally would use English Bridal from Wicked and Craig or their new Latigo from Wicked and Craig. Um, but yeah, all right. I already filmed it, the bill, so I already know what I said. You're just gonna have to watch the rest. There's gonna be timestamps in the description uh, for different important spots in the build. But uh, yeah, let's get into the build. And the first thing we're gonna go over is the hardware where to get them, and then we're gonna do a pattern overview. So go ahead and download your patterns and take them out, and we're gonna and follow along. Yeah, you know what I said. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, so the one big piece of hardware is this brass chain, and this is a 36 inch brass chain. They come in different sizes as far as the thickness of the wire. Uh, of course, if you don't want to use a brass chain, you could just make a strap with a piece of leather, it's no big deal. There'll be a link in the description for this brass chain. Uh, this is, you get this from Buckle Guy. One thing to keep in mind with this brass chain is that there's, you need a way to connect this brass chain, all right? And the way you connect this is with a thing called a jump ring. So this is easily, you just weave this through there, easy peasy, pumpkin wheezy, and then you close this back up with some special tools I'll show you. And what I mean by special tools, simply I mean just jeweler's tools like this, something with a curve, but then I put that, I put the uh, tool magic on the tips of this so it doesn't maul that material. I'll show you that. I've shown it to you before. Um, hold on. But you just dip that tool into something like that. You get this right at Michael's. Um, I actually bought these on Amazon and I'm pretty sure you could buy these on Amazon too, but Michael's, um, Hobby Lobby will sell something like this called Tool Magic, and it's simply just, it, it's like a, like a cream, like a white cream. This is really all dried out. This is actually bad. It doesn't look like that when you first get it. But you just dip 
You literally just dip the tips of the tools in there and let it sit overnight, you know, up. You know, so that uh, it puts a plastic coating so it doesn't maul up your, your uh, hardware. But yeah, this is actually, I'm gonna throw this tool magic in the garbage. Consider it thrown out. So yeah, you need these jump rings. I'll put a link in the description when you get these jump rings. You also need, this is optional, but this is a fish hook, a keychain fish hook. And the good thing about this, this is buckle guy. This is an optional thing. You'll see um, where you can add this if you want. Uh, but the good thing about this, when you buy this from buckle guy, it comes with these jump rings, all right? So what I do is, I don't use a jump ring. What I use is a key, a, a key ring. And I just repurpose these jump rings for these. Of course, you could buy these jump rings individually on Buckle Guy, but I just go ahead and buy a whole bunch of these fish hook, and I just repurpose this, these jump rings, for the brass chains, and I replace it with a keychain, a key ring. So you can do what you want. I'll put descriptions uh, in the link for, uh, for where you can buy all this. The other thing, too, is this is how I fasten. This is how I fasten the, uh, the uh, flap to the main body. This is called a lox, a lox um, snap. And it's a really cool mechanism, it's made in Germany. Uh, it's hard to find. There's two different versions. There's a version that the washer, whoa, hold on. That this washer is a little shallow, so it's better for thinner leather. There's a second version where this is a little deeper for thicker leather. And I think where I get it from, they only sell the deeper version, which is good enough for thinner leather too. So um, I would go ahead and use the, th the deeper throat on this washer. It's hard to explain. But this washer right here, that is a little, it could be that or it could be the thread on this. I don't know, one of the two, but just get the deeper version. But where I buy it, where the link you, to buy this is at, they have only the deep version. So you don't have to worry about it. And you get this at a place called Maker's Supply. I'll put a link in the description. They have different colors. They have different um, de uh, designs. They have a plain one. They have um, one with just a dot in the middle. They have silver. They have black. So they have different colors of these. It also comes with a tool that you need. When you buy this, I think it comes with the tool. Hold on, let me show you. It comes with this little tool which you can get away with if you're only doing a couple of these. But I suggest on that same website, I put a link as well, you need to actually buy the nice tool that goes with it. Because the way you close this up is that you gotta put this in the hole right here and you're threading it on itself. You're threading it on itself. And you can see those prongs that dig into the leather whenever my thing wants to focus. But um, let me show you the tool that I, that I bought that makes life a little bit easier, all right? So it's the same thing, but just a bigger version, okay? And they sell this on the same website, Maker's Mark. I'll put a link in the description for, for this stuff. And one more item that you do need is two D-rings, two three-quarter inch D-rings. Let me get them. I use these all the time on a lot of my stuff. Alrighty, whenever I can find them. Okay, I found them. I got it, guys. Stop yelling. So, you guys notice a lot of my products, I repurpose a lot of the same hardware. That's why a lot of my stuff looks the same. But you need two D-rings. I'll put a link in the description for this. This is Weaver leather. You can buy this. But Buckle Guy has a whole bunch of these different colors. Weaver doesn't have that many different colors on this. But Buckle Guy has a whole bunch, nickel, silver, uh, antique. Same thing with the chain. They have uh, silver, they have a black. Um, so you can make this whatever colors you want. I even think they have different colors of these as well. So yeah, that's that. Now let's go ahead and grab our pieces, take your patterns out, and we're gonna go over the different pieces in the pattern. If you're looking at your patterns, this is pattern A. This is a front body. This is where the buckle's gonna go, the head of the buckle. This is pattern B. This is the back body. This is pattern C. This is the main flat that goes over and the other part of the buckle goes here. This is uh, pattern C. I have a different view, um, uh, inverted view, so you can, it can, you can cut this out a little bit easier. Also, 
if you guys notice on the patterns, anything that's in gray, that is basically a preference. So the gray area you see pattern C, I have a flap alternate. That just simply means I made this a little more pronounced. It came in a little sharper uh, close to here. So you can do what you want with that. But the main, main importance is the width and the height. Okay, so you can do this radius how you want. Uh, pattern uh, D is the back pocket. All right, this is pattern D, the back pocket. Now this radius here, you wanna keep this the same because this is gonna line up with the bottom of A and B, okay? And then of course you have two of these D-ring connectors. This is where the D-rings are gonna connect right back here. You're gonna put your D-rings in here, you need two of those. And then this is optional, this is a spine tab. This is where it's gonna connect right here. And that is where the, this little fish hook slides over. Like I said, this fish hook is optional. I would still put this on there or you don't have to, you could just have to rivet that in. All right, but I like it like that. It gives, me, it, gives it a sofio leather look, in my opinion. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we have to identify what we have to glue and what we have to burnish. So let me show you how this is gonna get put together. It's really simple. First thing you're gonna do is take C. We're gonna do this in a second, but let me explain why you need to burnish a couple things. You're gonna take pattern C and rivet it all together on the back here like this on pattern B, right? Then you're going to weave all these holes, line them up. You're gonna have D-ring, D-ring on the outside, and you're gonna have the spine tab in there. And this is gonna hold this together to the back body. Then you're gonna glue this piece D. Is that D? Hold on guys. Yeah, you're gonna glue D to the back here. And then this is all one unit. You're gonna flip it over. And then you're simply gonna take pattern A and glue it to the front here. And then you're gonna stitch everything. So now that you guys know that, we have to identify what we have to bevel and burnish first. So let's look at this real quick, all right? We're gonna bevel and burnish these little things first, right, obviously. We're gonna bevel and burnish that. We're gonna bevel and burnish all of A, every single bit of A, all of it around, all right? We're going to, uh, on D, like in Delta, we're gonna bevel and burnish just the top here, all right? Because you, you can't get to it once you glue it. So the top. On alpha, we're just gonna bevel and burnish just the top here, because you can't get to it once you assemble it, all right? And on the back body, which is B, I think this is B. I should have looked at this first. Yeah, Bravo, same thing. We're gonna just do the top here, because you can't get to the top once you assemble it. After that, then once this is connected like this, guys, check this out. It's really simple. Once this is connected, then at the end, when we're done, then we can take care and bevel and burnish all this at the end. So let's go ahead and bevel and burnish what we talked about. It's a little bit of a hot mess over here. There's plenty of YouTube videos on how to bevel and burnish. Um, so, oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Every single piece here Wow, that's silly. Every single piece here is made out of five ounce. All right, so I would go anywhere from four to five ounce. Um, I think anything thicker than that might be too thick, but everything here is five ounce, a absolutely everything. Every single piece of this is all five ounce. Also, all the holes, these X's on the, mark, on the uh, print, the X's are five thirty seconds holes. All of the holes are five thirty seconds holes with the exception of this hole for the locks and that hole for the locks. You just have to refer to, you just have to refer to the print for those sizes there. But everything else, these holes up here uh, is 5 30 seconds. Those holes up here are 5 30 seconds. And all of these are 5 30 seconds. Okay? All right, let's get back to beveling and burnishing. Wow. Hey, I was just thinking, I'm, beveled, I'm burnishing this right here, and I wanted to tell you that this is not really necessary. 
this scallop. You can do it if you want, or you can make it a little more pronounced or a little more narrow. The reason why I do that is if when you stuff, when you stuff this up, this bag, if you don't have something uh, like a relief right here, it's gonna buckle up and this piece is gonna bacon. I do this a lot on any kind of newspaper pocket or any pocket that kind of expands that doesn't have a gusset. If not, it's gonna bake in right here and look kind of silly. So you do what you want there. Any kind of relief would work out. Um, I was a little bit lazy and I just used, um, when I say I was lazy, that means that I was lazy. But I used one of these. And I know a lot of guys round the edges off a little more. You could do that if you want. And the way you do that is that you, you take it here and then you put another round point there. You could do that, but I like this. Um, I like this Sofield look, which is a little more rugged um, and is all birthed out of pure laziness. All right, so let's just recap this. I forgot the, the, the print, but this back piece, all I did was the top. This back piece, all I did was the top. This front pocket, all I did was the top. The lid, I did absolutely everything all the way around. And all of my connection pieces, I did all of it. All right, let's assemble it. I'll show you how easy it is. I gotta find the right angle. See, I'm trying to get rid of this dad bot so you don't see it. So you don't see that dad bot, so let's, yeah. There we go. All right, so you can use Chicago screws at this point if you really wanted to. I would use quarter inch, um, but I am going to use brass rivets. I'm using number nine brass rivets. And what makes this look good is you have to spend the money and buy these Douglas rivet setters. If you guys want, you can watch that video I have um, on tools. I'll put a link right here. But what we're simply gonna do is take, I should keep this phone open. All right, we're gonna take a pattern, not pattern, but uh, F, not F, sorry, E, the D-ring connectors. And we're gonna assemble the D-rings right here in place. Okay. And then the spine tab, which is F, is simply gonna go right here, okay? That's what's gonna happen here, really simple. So what you could do is you could put a little bit of glue right here and right here so it could help with that. But out of pure laziness, I'm not gonna do that because um, I have, I don't have any, enough time to, yes I do, you know what? Let me, let me grab that. Let me, let me stop being lazy, y'all. Let me stop being lazy. Let me do this right, you know what I mean? Let me do this right. Let me do this right for you, okay? Let me do this right. You guys deserve that. So I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna scratch it a little bit so the leather has a little more bite to stick to. I'm just going in between the holes here. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that on the flesh side because it's already pretty rough. So I don't know if that's a good job of roughing, but you know what I mean, just get it a little bit rough here. I don't glue past this hole, you'll see why when we have to stitch. So let's go ahead and get our handy dandy glue and a little bit goes a long way you know what i should do first i like to do this first to be honest with you so i can locate it let me let me let me do this right so i i tend to do this this way it's easier to line this up when you uh when you're ready to do the deal you know what i mean that's a leather term do the deal um, you guys can use that if you want. That's a lot. And I'm just going to do a little bit back here so that it has something to stick to. All right, that's about all you need. Okay, here we go. Bam, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. All right. We take the little squeaky wheel noiser jigger or a little, a little, uh, 
mallet or something to get this down. I probably put it on, I probably put it on a little too wet, but uh, whatever. Sometimes I don't even do the glue, to be honest with you, um, but you should, okay? Now, really simple, we're gonna weave, what is this pattern? E? Yeah, E. Look how easy this is. Now you could use <laughs> a large anvil, <coughs> but I'm gonna use this little piece of, uh, flat piece of metal bar here as my anvil, because I don't wanna lift this up and then have these rivets fall out. You see? And you're gonna point this up, all right? This becomes the means of attaching the, uh, the means of attaching the uh, chain. And even if you do a leather strap, all right, with a nice buckle and to make it adjustable, this is still very nice. And this setup is very similar to my briefcase where all the weight is being distributed from the spine of the, of the, um, from the spine of the back versus the lid. I don't like putting any weight on, on the lids of my bags. Um, especially on briefcases, if you put all that weight on the lid, you have to reinforce the lid with a bar. I've seen guys do that. I don't know, I just don't like it. I like coming off the back because it's coming straight up with the leather, not against it. This is the way I do it. This is a mail bag, a mailman bag uh, variant on how to actually lift your bag. I went over that in one of the other videos. It's not that big a deal on a, uh, such a light bag like this, but on the briefcase, I like to lift all the weight from the back of the bag. And what happens is the bag tilts towards your hip when you're wearing it. Anyway, I'm, I went too deep into that. I'll just be quiet. So like I said, you can use Chicago screws here if you want. So I just wanna make sure that that is nice and straight. So doing this does a couple things. It secures the flap to the actual body of the bag. It secures the flap to the actual body of the bag. I'm gonna do the other one. And also, it, sec it secures the body to the, to the flap of the bag. That's basically what this is for. But I like to use the D-ring as another way of attaching the, the flap. You could make this, which I've actually made it before, one whole piece, the flap and the back body. You could just do one whole piece. Uh, and I, the reason why I didn't do that is because that die would not, that die is too big for my clicker. So I broke it up into two different pieces, which, which made it look like a mini uh, briefcase. So kind of worked out once again, birthed out of pure laziness. And now we have to do the spine. The reason why I put this spine on here, guys, is because I don't want to leave too much opening here with no way of attaching the lid. Imagine if I only had this and the glue doesn't hold up and then you have this big opening here. So this spine tab is actually another way of securing the lid to the back panel. And like I said before, I didn't just want to put rivets in there. Uh, you could, but why not utilize that, those rivets and, and put something in here like a keychain holder or something, or another way they can carry it or whatever they want to do with it. Once again, birth out of laziness. Inversely, you can just stitch this really nice if you'd like, to be honest. Just run a line from this rivet to that rivet just scribe a line and then stitch that. That'll look really sharp too. So you can do away with this if you if you like. Um, but like I said, I want to see if I can get this bag under an hour, you know? Because I can make this bag as pretty as I want, but it might take six, seven hours. Ain't nobody going to spend that much money on a bag like that. But if it's for yourself or a loved one and you want to spend the time and make it super pretty, you can beautify this thing super sharp. So all of my stuff is modifiable is what I call it, which is not a word, is modular, I guess you could say. Modular is the right word.
I am talking a lot. I will be quiet. All right. So there is that back panel. You can see how dirty that is. That bothers me, but this is just a scrap piece. All right, hold on. We're gonna move on to the next step. All right, so we're done with riveting. I'm gonna put this all away. And we're gonna take piece del delta, piece D like in delta. And we're gonna glue it to the back here. But let me put this away because we don't need this anymore. We do need the glue, we'll keep the glue. And uh, let me show you. So you wanna just line this up, right? Where it's gonna go. Make a little mark where you're gonna glue. You don't wanna glue past that, obviously. And I like to do a little scratch job here. So this could actually, the glue could stick to this a little bit. Now, you guys seen these bags I made before, and what I did before was I made this go all the way out to the edge, this piece. I made this go all the way out to the edge because I can just put this back together with one stitch run. If you really wanted to, you can make this pocket a little shorter, stitch it here first, like I did before, and then when you rotate this and stitch it, that'll be another stitch run. But I wanted to make this as fast as possible, and this actually looks pretty sharp. Um, so once I glue this on here, then I glue the other piece on here, and then I just stitch it one time around, and then we are done. Add the chain and the buckle, and then we're done. But let's go ahead and, and uh, put a little glue on here. I like gluing off the table. Let me show you what I'm doing because, hold on. So to me, gluing like this on an edge, coming off the table like this, is a little easier than trying to do it on a flat surface. Because you don't have to worry about getting it on your table and just rotate this thing. My wife is yelling at me. Let me clean this side up a little bit. Because what I do is, is I come off the edge like that. Same thing with this piece. Now we're going to do this. I'm going to put glue on both sides. And this I want to make sure that it's, uh, the glue is tacky before I assemble it. I put the other one on a little too wet out of pure rushness. That's the word I made up. You guys can use it. But, uh, whoa. I don't like big globs like that, see that? Push that off. I'm gonna let that dry for a second and we're gonna simply, we're just gonna put it on that. I mean, it's as simple as that. We're gonna wait till it dries and then we're just gonna, boop, put it on here. You wanna make sure that these ends here are exactly perfect. But we can fix that a little bit. If it's a little bit uh, off, we we'll sand it and, and do all that. But uh, yeah, the way you dry this faster is you do ninja hands. All right, so I think we are good to go. And simply take this carefully and uh, put it on here. I'm using a die to cut this, so these are pretty exact. If you're doing this by hand, you might find that it's not perfect, and don't worry about that, because you can, you can uh, sand this down and make it nice and even. And you could put it on a little bit wet so that you could manipulate it just a touch. So mine's a little bit, not completely dry yet, so I'm able to just nudge it ever so gently. And then, uh, I keep putting this away, but I actually need it. Be careful when you're using this, when it's still wet, because you can actually push it off. So I like to do this first, straight up and down. 
you think about it, if the leather's wet and you start doing this really hard, you're gonna actually shift that. So if anything, hold it down like that so it doesn't wanna move on you. Or go straight up and down versus pushing it that way. I don't know if that makes any sense. Or little short strokes like this. All right, so look, look, that's done. Now we're gonna flip it. Now we're gonna take piece, uh, what is this one? Piece A. We're gonna take A and do the same thing and just glue it on top, just like that. Now this is going flesh to flesh, so I don't need to, I don't need to scratch it, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this. Uh, I'm gonna do it the same way I did before, off the edge. I don't have to show you that, you guys know how that looks, right? All right, so I glued it real quick, no different than the other one, but uh, you, do, you, you wanna go all the way to the top there. Same thing here, go all the way to the top, and then you're just simply gonna put this on. Try to get it as square as possible. Now you notice I have not put the buckles in, or the snap that locks fastener, because you can put it on afterwards at the end. Now I, I use this, I cut this with a clicker, so they're pretty accurate. If you do this by hand, you might notice that it's not exactly perfect. Don't worry about it. Um, I wouldn't stress too much. You can get it nice and flush. Just sand it down a little. Okay, so here we go. So you notice it has, this thing has a lot of stuff back here. So what I usually do at this point to knock it in and do make it look nice, uh, I flip it and then it sits a little flat on the bottom there. So that glue is there. If you have clips, this is the time where you put the clips on. And what I mean by big bowl clips is, uh, you know, you can clip this and let it sit for an hour or so, all the way around. You know, just keep on working all the way around with these big clips. I put a link in the description where you can find these. I'm not gonna do that of pure laziness. I feel confident in my gluing skills right now. I'm gonna let this sit for like an hour I'm gonna go have lunch with the wifey, and then I'll come back. And all we have to do at this point, guys, is stitch it, okay? We're just gonna run a stitch all the way around here and call it a day. So this bag you can put together uh, relatively fast. This is the reason why I built it this way. Um, if you really wanted to make it super nice, you can make this pocket a little shorter and then stitch that in place first. This, but you have to run a stitch there and then another one out here. And then you can even run a stitch here and get rid of this. Just run a sti sti stitch all the way across the lid here. Um, you can run a stitch around the lid here if you wanted to. It's modular uh, and you can do what you want. But I'm just showing you the main dimensions of this and how I do it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to let that sit. And I'm going to have lunch and I'll... Come back, bye. All right. We're gonna clean this up. You see there's a whole bunch of glue and it's not exactly perfect. So sand this down a little bit. You can use 150 grit sandpaper, 150 grit. I'll take this off. I'm gonna use this because I've spent money on it. Getting rid of a lot of that glue. And uh, you wanna make this as even as possible. If, if everything's pretty even, then your stitch is gonna look really good. <sighs> you know? It won't look higher on one side versus the other. All right. Next, <sighs> we are simply <sighs> gonna stitch. If you guys want to learn how to stitch, I'll put a video up here 
I made a pretty long tutorial on actually how to hand stitch, saddle stitch. We're gonna do the saddle stitch on this. And uh, yeah, watch that video if you wanna know how to saddle stitch. In the meantime, I'm gonna punch all the holes and get my thread ready. So if you guys wanna watch that, let me show you. So when it's time to stitch, there's two different school of thoughts. If you mark your stitch line here and then stitch, it's a little bit easier because you're not fighting any kind, this is flat, it's laying flat. If you go the other way and you stitch from this way out, you have to overcome all of this, how it doesn't want to sit flat, kind of wobbles. The other thing too is you, if you go from here that way, you gotta make sure not to stitch through this part here. So to me, it's easier if I stitch from this, from this end out. The other thing too is that you can kind of mark your stitch from here so that so that you're running like an over stitch over this back pocket. So I'm gonna start there and you'll see what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. You'll see what I'm talking about here is, oh my goodness, I forgot to do this. See, I'm gonna leave it in there. I'm not even gonna edit it. I'm gonna mark <laughs> my stitch line. Wow. That's funny. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See? Now I know that I'm not gonna be right on the edge of that, of that pocket. Alrighty, I can actually add one more if I just flip this up a little bit. I'm gonna flip this up and add one more. It's actually easier. It's actually easier if I Let me show you. So I'm just gonna use my awl and come through that way. I think it's a little bit easier than uh, using that tool. Yep. She is ready for stitching. All right, we're gonna go with white. We're gonna go with white. I like white with the uh, natural. All right, it's gonna take a little bit, so I'll get back to you when uh, we're done stitching and we'll take it from there, bye. So out of pure boredom, I wanna see how long it takes me to stitch one inch. 
all right? So there's a total of 30 inches of, uh, that I have to stitch. And I'm assuming from my preliminary findings from doing this for so many years is that I'm right at a minute and a half per inch. Of course, I'm using five stitches per inch, so that's like one of the biggest stitches per inch. So it's a little bit faster. But let's go ahead and count. So I need to count five stitches, and that's gonna tell me how long. We're gonna put a timer once I start, all right? Once this needle touches this leather, we're gonna put a timer, and we're gonna count and see how long. All right, three, two, one, go. I'm gonna try to go as normal as possible. I'm not super fast. Oh, I already messed up. One. Two. This has nothing to do with building this clutch bag, but I was just bored. I kind of want to do something. <laughs> I was bored uh, stitching this, so why not? Three. And I don't know what the time is because I'm going to do this when I'm editing the video. Four. I don't know the time. Here's five. And five, stop. I'm assuming that's close to a minute, minute, 20 seconds. I don't know because I'm not editing the video. I'll put the timer on while I'm editing. But yeah, that's all I got for you. Almost done. And then all we have to do after we're done, bevel and burnish, clean it up, oil it, condition it, make it. And then when it says done, then we put on the hardware. Super easy, I'll show you. I'm just doing a quick and dirty edge cleanup. Nothing special. This is primarily teaching you how you how you guys put this together. So don't judge me on the, the finish on this. This is just gonna be a shop ornament, really. All right, let's uh, burnish it. All right, this is gonna be good enough for the, for the video. You know what I mean? All right. Next. Let's lube this thing up. See if we can get rid of that. I don't think we can, but let's see if we can. All right, so I try to get rid of that. I can't. I'm just gonna leave it in there. It's gonna be a shop piece. You could stitch just a patch over it though. You know what I mean? You could put like a, a name or a logo, another piece of leather over that. So you can get rid of that. But uh, I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna do it. I'll leave this in the background of the shop. You know? Just be a little shop piece. So I'm just using a uh, regular old needs for oil. This is natural veggie tan, Herman Oak, four to five ounce. And uh, has some scrap laying around. That's why it's all jacked up like, like that, but. Like I said, this is really just to teach you guys how to put this together. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Oops, now that we're here, That just reminded me, when you're done stitching, you kind of want to open up a bone folder. You want to open up, run it along the stitch. You don't want any glue settling there. Forgot to tell you that. Same thing on the inside. This will just help if there's any glue on there. Just run it along the stitch. See, there's a little piece right there. And that's it. Oopsie poopsie. You like that word? Oopsie poopsie. All 
All right, let's put this back and let's put the hardware in. Hardware in. All right, so on the front piece, you're gonna take the male end and you're simply gonna unthread it. All right. You're gonna weave this part, stick it up to the bottom hole there. All right, you're just gonna stick it up, take the top part, and I always find this to thread it with your hand first. Don't force it. Spin it as close as you can. Put your finger on the back piece so you can hold it. Take your tool and tighten this bad boy down. Hand tighten, nothing super crazy. I used to put Loctite on the threads and then do this, but I found that you don't need to. That's a little overkill. So that one's done, saw how fast that was. Same thing for the top piece. You're gonna unthread this bad boy. All right. Take the top. Put the top through here. Now there's a small detail here. There's a, a name on the bottom there. The locks name. Try to put that where it looks sharp towards the bottom and kind of keep it there. And take this and by hand thread it carefully. Now you're going from, from the flesh side, so it's already it already grabbed, the teeth already grabbed on the leather, so now I'm gonna hold it there so it doesn't move. And we're gonna spin this. Yeah, I don't want that name to move. So keep an eye for that, hand tight. That's it for that. And uh, there's that. It looks super blotchy and terrible right now. So I can't film my outro until, <laughs> I can't film my intro until this thing is, doesn't look like that. But gently work this a little bit. Now we gotta put the chain on, All right? Let's get this out of the way. And we're gonna put this chain on real quick. Blotchy, blotchy, blotch, blotch. All right. Let's uh, do a zoom job. All right, weave your jump ring through the bottom of uh, that chain there. Weave it through here and simply take your tools and you're gonna reclose it, okay? You don't wanna do this too many times, you'll, you'll uh, really weaken the, the brass. So you only wanna do this once. I don't know if that's true or not, I just said it, sound it right. And you wanna close it. So that is done. And maybe, is there a way to, yeah, that's about as tight as you're gonna get. So there's that one. Now this one, uh, like I said, these jump rings come with this fish hook or you can buy them separate, but you just gotta take this one off, same way, grab, grab, twist open, take this out, weave this through there, and you kinda wanna get this straight, right? You want this to be nice and straight, not all crooked and twisted. So you just gotta run it so it's nice and flat. Get the twist out. And then you drop it like that, but then you leave it in because you don't want to edit it. You weave it back through there and put it back through there. It's gonna twist a little bit, it's inevitable, but you wanna get as much as it out. And then you're going to Do this again. Uh, look at that. Boys, ladies and gentlemen, she is Dunskies. She is done. That's what the back looks like. 
with the chain. This is what the front looks like, all blotchy and looks terrible. Nobody's gonna buy my pattern. Uh, one more thing is you just gotta weave your key ring onto this. I'll put a link in the description where you can find this tool. It's a key ring tool. Super cool. Let me see if I could. This key ring tool. That really helps big time. The old key ring tool job. I said it helps big time, but then I can't do it. Only because I'm on filming. It makes it a little bit easier. Or you can use your teeth, whatever. I don't care. All right, let's back her out. And let me show you where this comes in. I'll put a link in the description. You can find this, amazonspecial.com. <coughs> and now when you slide that in there, now you have like a little key ring thingy, Bob, right there. That is the bag. I think I'm going to let this blotchiness come off and then I'll do my intro and my outro. So that is how do you make this ladies clutch bag. All right. Like I said, the pattern and the download is going to be in the description and the pin first comments. Also, I'm going to have uh, hands that move up and down like this, but also links to where I buy all this stuff. I'm not affiliated, like I said, I'm not affiliated. So this is just where I found this hardware. They have different color options, so don't feel like you're committed to the brass. Uh, you can get nickel, silver, black, antique. Uh, the design on this buckle, they come different designs. You have different designs, they're different colors, so. Yeah, and it's modular. You can add a gusset, like I said, if you wanted to, for you advanced guys. I haven't done it yet. You might have to adjust the length of the flap, maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, and you can scale this up, scale this down. The principles are the same. This is essentially a briefcase, all right, without a gusset, smaller, essentially. So once you guys master these kind of small things, you can upscale, and especially once you learn how to make a gusset. But that's it, I hope you guys enjoyed that. God bless you, talk to you later, have a good day, bye.